So it's time to update the semi atomic wave pre-configuration with RetroWatch and LaunchBox. A bunch of work has gone into this one to make it a hell of a lot easier for you guys to use. And I've also overhauled the light gun stuff, making for easy switching between controllers and light guns. I've also added some mitigations in so those said light gun games should work as good as they can straight out the box. But you may still need to mess around with your mouse indexing. And I will have a dedicated section at the end of the video just for light gun users. As per usual with all my pre-configurations, all of your controls have been preset, and I've also included a button layout image for every single game, so you know exactly what the buttons are before you even start playing. With the Thomas Wave especially, there's a bunch of unlockable content for so many of these games, and of course this has been pre-unlocked for you, so you don't need to unlock any additional characters or cars for any of these games, making this a really good definitive way to play Samuel Thomas Wave. There's also a bunch of other stuff that's been done to make all of these games work as seamlessly as possible. But rather than bore you with all of those details, we're just going to get stuck straight in and get everything set up as quickly as possible. Of course, you're going to need to download those pre-configuration files and those images, and these are available in three different places. They're up on the LaunchBox forums, they're on GitHub, and they're on my Patreon. If you're downloading them from GitHub, make sure that you get them from the releases section. So just take your pick as to where you want to get those from. But do keep in mind all the documentation is on the LaunchBox forums. Once you've got that downloaded, you should end up with two folders, the RetroWatch files and the control images and platform XML folder. Of course, you need to make sure that both of these are unzipped. And we're going to do the RetroWatch files first. So just bring up the file system for RetroWatch, open up this folder and you should see the config and the saves folder contained within. Select both of these and simply move them into the root folder of RetroArch. Then you want to start RetroArch up and make sure that you've got the Flycast core downloaded. So start RetroArch up, go into Online Updater, Core Downloader, and then you want to scroll all the way up to Sega Dreamcast slash Naomi. There we go, that's the one. Press Enter on this, wait for it to download. And once it's downloaded, I recommend doing it again just to make sure that you've got the most recent version. Now we can move on to the LaunchBox side of things, which I've made a hell of a lot easier by providing a custom platform XML with all of these games pre-imported. So all we really need to do is add the emulator and then point LaunchBox to where our ROMs are located. Now before we do any of this, you need to make sure that LaunchBox is closed down and not running in the background. So make sure that you do that first. Then of course you need to bring up the folder system for LaunchBox, open up my pre-config files and you should see the data and the images folder contained within. And again, with this one, all you need to do is move those into the root of LaunchBox and make sure that you replace any files that are already there. Now you can go ahead and actually start LaunchBox up and you should see the semi Thomas Wave platform in the arcade section on the left hand side. If it's not there, restart LaunchBox and it then should appear. Now the very first thing that we need to do is point LaunchBox to where our ROMs are located. So make sure that you've got semi Thomas Wave selected, then just click on any of these entries and press Ctrl A to select them all. Then go up to tools, go down to file management, and then you need to click on change ROMs folder path for selected games. Then just find a folder where your ROMs are located, select it, and then just press OK. And keep in mind, you can point this to a full main set if you want to. You don't have to separate all of those Atomic Wave ROMs if you don't want to. Now, if you don't already have RetroWatch added to LaunchBox, you just need to go up to tools, go to manage, and click on emulators. Then just click on this add button in the bottom left hand corner. And with the emulator name, of course, this is going to be RetroArch. So it should actually pre-populate that for you like it's done for me here. And then with the application path, just click on Browse, find where your RetroArch EXE is, select it, and then press on Open. Then you need to go into Associated Platforms on the left-hand side, find Sammy Thomas Wave in the list, and double-check that this checkbox with the default emulator is actually checked. Then click on OK, press Yes to this, and then you can just press Close. And from here, you can just click on any of these entries and just play. Now, if you're a light gun user, you'll be happy to know that all of these games have been calibrated and are accurate out of the box. All you need to do is change your input type over to light gun, and you should be able to switch between controller and light gun on the fly, and it shouldn't cause an issue. So if you're a light gun user, you should already be aware of raw input and the nightmares that it can bring with mouse indexing. 
Raw input can sometimes make your mouse indexing change on the fly, causing your mice or your light guns to just suddenly stop working. And if that happens, nine times out of 10, it actually is the mouse indexing. And if you need to change that, make sure you do not do this from within the RetroArch menu. Doing it that way will clear absolutely everything else that I've set in those configuration files. And that's just a small quirk with RetroArch and raw input. So if you do need to change your mouse indexing, you need to edit the configuration file directly. So if you go into the config folder of RetroArch, then go into the Flycast folder, you can see that I've got a configuration file for each individual game. This is because the inputs vary game to game. So if I open one of these up, you can see that we've got the mouse indexing entry right there. And you can change this to whatever you need it to be. Keep in mind that position zero is essentially position one. And depending on your software, it will show up as position zero or position one. So just make sure that you get that right. And after you've done that, obviously make sure that you save it. There we go. That was my super quick setup guide for my pre-configuration for Sammy Atomis Wave under RetroWatch and LaunchBox with Sega Naomi 1 and 2 coming very soon. So if you want to keep up to date with all of that, you know what to do. And if you like today's video, slam me a thumbs up. And apart from that, Go play some games. Adios.